I think he brought half the road back with him. Holy cow, look at this. Good morning. Hope you guys had a great weekend. I sure did. Uh, we got to spend a little bit of time at the lake. I had a good weekend with the family and everything, and a great Father's Day. I should have said something about that uh, on Friday. Wished everybody a happy Father's Day, but I kind of forgot. So uh, I'll say it now. Happy Father's Day, everybody. And uh, yeah, I did take a couple of short clips of us at the lake with the boat since I was working on that. Thought you guys might be interested, so uh, play those now. We made it to the lake today. Kids are on the boat, probably throwing the keys in the water. This is what we do, we come here and sit. There's a nice little island here, everybody congregates at. It's a pretty good time. Would appear that we, um, we may be wedding crashing here. Meh, do what you gotta do, right? So my boat does work now. Just like that. That was a pretty good time there at the lake. Uh, obviously my wife and my kids went with me, uh, my mom, and then the other people with us was my sister Katie and uh, her husband, my brother-in-law Scott, and their son Parker. Uh, they were home this weekend to see everybody and visit a little bit. Scott is a uh, first lieutenant in the Michigan National Guard. He is a Chinook pilot, flies the, the helicopters, and uh, his unit is being deployed to the Middle East. Sounds like Kuwait or Iraq here on July 4th, I believe they're leaving. And so they wanted to come and see everybody kind of one more time before he takes off. Um, going to be gone for a year. And that's going to be really hard, uh, not only for, for Katie and, and Parker, his son, but uh, for everybody here. And uh, Scott, we uh, hope you stay safe and can't wait till you get back and we can see it, uh, see you again. And uh, thanks for all you do for, for the country and for us. So, uh, yeah, it's going to be a tough year for, for a lot of us with uh, missing him and everybody else. And I know military families go through it all the time, right? So... Uh, thank you to all of the service members out there, uh, especially Scott and his unit who are deploying here in a couple of weeks. As for around the farm this week, we have got a lot going on, which seems like things should slow down after we get done in the fields, but uh, that's not the case. I've got to go unload a seed or load a seed truck with my corn returns right now. So I'm going to head down there and do that. We are also, we missed the rain this weekend. Uh, there was an 80% chance of rain yesterday and we didn't get any of it. Uh, and there was also at one point last week, there was like six or seven days in a row with a pretty good chance of rain this week. Uh, today it's not going to rain. There's a slight chance tomorrow, nothing on Wednesday. We're turning dry. It's not good. So today we get to lay irrigation pipe, I think, uh, get ready to start irrigating that field that we can do. Um, they're also coming to get that, uh, 2510 anhydrous bar that's still out there. Um, yeah. Didn't need to really be in a big hurry to get it done, but that's okay. So they're supposed to come and get that this morning, I think. I don't really know. We'll see. Um, but that was the plan last that I had talked to them. So it looks like Dad's getting ready to go spray some manganese with our little uh, pull-type sprayer on some of those beans. So I'll probably help him with that, and then hopefully he can help me lay some irrigation pipe. Getting the uh, return seed sent out here. We're going to load the truck up with some empty boxes now. All right, he is full. That cleans up stuff a little bit. We still gotta get all those boxes folded down and pick a whole lot more up from customers yet. So we'll have a couple more truckloads of boxes to go back. Okay, so it turns out Dad and I are not on the same page at all. Um, but anyway, I'm gonna go spray this manganese out and finish this job so I can have the tractor because I need it for laying this pipe and getting irrigation stuff going. However, they're here to pick up that bar so I'm gonna help them for a minute before I pull out of here. All right, we made it over to the field here. Can you guys see those yellow spots in these beans in this low ground, in the muck? That's the manganese deficiency. In fact, I'll walk out here and show you a close-up of it. But that's what we're spraying is manganese. It's a, 
a foliar fertilizer basically it's uh, a powder form that we put in there and uh, uh, it mixes up and then these beans will take it in through their leaves and it will fix this deficiency See here look at these leaves See you got the yellowing between the veins On the leaves it's starting to turn brown even because it's severe in some of these spots, so um, That's what we're trying to fix. We'll have to hit these beans a few times throughout the year, but uh, uh, We can actually raise beans when we put it on we can't if we don't, they won't. They just won't produce anything. So you can also see our weeds, our ragweed, are dying. Those are what we sprayed last week in this exact same spot. So that is a good thing. We're going to get our booms unfolded on the sprayer here, manual fold, uh, and uh, we'll get going on this. Get it done so we can move on. You guys, you see this stuff here? This is tape from one of the bags. Sprayer doesn't work when you put tape in the tank. It clogs up filters. I'm not very happy at the moment. Okay. I'm calming down a little bit. I was pretty upset there for a minute because I did not load this sprayer. I did not want to spray this sprayer. But it, that's what I'm ending up doing. And it's 10 o'clock already? Holy crap. We ain't gonna be watering any corn today. We're never gonna make it. Oh well, I hope it rains tonight. We're still gonna set up what we can. Um, come on, tell me what time it is. Yep, 9.56, okay. Well, we're gonna go try this again. It worked in the driveway, but there was a bunch of tape that plugged up the filter. I couldn't get the filter cover off in the field, so I had to go back and get a wrench, which I brought with me because there's probably more. Okay, let's try this again and I'll show you what happened. But basically in here, there is a screen and a filter and uh, it got plugged up. I couldn't get this cover off uh, in the field here and the little one, I couldn't get the stuff to come out of it. And yeah, so we had to go back and get a wrench. Now we've got it. Let's try and unfold our booms again and hope that it works. Look what I found, guys. That's a skid plate off of our bean head I lost last fall. Good to have back. Okay, I did about 15 acres in this field that I'm just pulling out of. And we're gonna jump across the road over here. Cause there's a big muck hole in this corner that's got yellow beans. And we're gonna do that, I don't know, that's maybe five acres maybe here. So, we sprayed about half our tank out. Sprayer does seem to be working better now. I know you guys probably can't see that it's actually spraying anything, but it is. I did have to stop a couple of times and clean out my screen again. But we're maintaining pressure on our gauge there, so I think we're okay now. There you can really see how yellow these beans can get without this uh, manganese. We'll spray this stuff on, we'll come back by the end of the week, they'll be as dark green as the rest of the field. Well, my tank is empty. I really needed to make about two more rounds to get over to the ditch there and get that spot, but oh well. We'll get it next time. Close enough. Dad's uh, finishing spraying some beans here today. Roundup uh, herbicide. Okay, now on to my irrigation project, which ain't going to happen today. Uh, but we're going to get as much done as we can. Uh, we do, however, uh, we got to run to Berkey because our generator is down there that we need to run our irrigation pump. We gotta go get it. Okay, this is what we are after. Uh, this is our generator. Um, we use generators to run our grain systems and uh, I'll explain that more when we get into harvest and show you the one that we have at our farm at Waldron there. Um, but basically, we can't get enough power from the electric company. So we have bought a generator and we use that. This one here is the original generator that we had. Um, it is uh, older and we bought a new stationary, a little bit bigger one a year ago and replaced this. We kept it as kind of a standby and because I use it as uh, the power for our irrigation. But we stored it down here to get it out of the way so that's why we're down here uh, getting it and we're gonna take it back up to Aldrin. According 
to my weather station down here, we had almost three tenths of an inch of rain here last night, which is good. It's it's still plenty dry, but things definitely are uh, perked up and look a little better than ours do at our at Waldron, where we did not get that rain and it's dry. Uh, which hence generator, yeah. Court's looking good down here. It's been a week and a half since we side dressed. These ends are a little little thin, but out in the field looks great. Okay, made it back to Waldron. Uh, I need to unhook that sprayer that we were using this morning. That one. Uh, and I want to put it in the barn back here, but I don't want to trap our uh, traveler back in there and corner it. So we're going to get the 4020 and hook up to that and pull it out of the barn. Then we're going to back the sprayer in there and unhook it so that we can take the 7520 and hook that up to our pipe trailer and get that up, the, up to the field where we need it. Um, I was looking at this track. Remember we took this 8300 down to the field where we were uh, working on that anhydrous bar when it broke? Phil brought it back Friday afternoon when uh, I was finishing the side dressing down there after we got it fixed. I think he brought half the road back with him. Holy cow, look at this. Yikes. All over the floor. That one's going to be fun to clean up this winter. Well, that thing hasn't seen the light of the day for well over a year. Almost two. Not quite two, because we didn't use it last year at all. Um, yeah. I'm not really excited about having to use it already, and I'm still hoping that it rains uh, tonight, and we don't actually have to yet, but we're getting there ready. Uh, basically, it's just a giant sprinkler going on the end here, kind of like what you would use in your lawn. This thing goes up and down, and you'll see it running. I'm sure we'll get it, I get it we'll show you, but uh, yeah. Uses a lot of water. So anyway, let's get our sprayer unhooked. That's the next thing we need is this tractor. Okay, pipe trailer. Okay, got her hooked up. This is a little difficult to hook up because our uh, jack is gone and missing and gotta use the three point and the chain to lift it. Anyway, I got it. Um, yeah. This is our pipe trailer. This is not all of our pipe, but it's what's on the trailer now, so this is what we're going to start with. And uh, you got to lay it all out by hand. So we do need to pull in front of the shop and check the tires on this, because it has also not moved in almost two years. Boy, quality paint job I did there, isn't it? Yeah. Oh well. I got all the tires. They were, uh, one was good, the other two were like two or three pounds low, and one was ten pounds low, which is not too bad. Well, the corn looks good up here, but it's definitely, definitely starting to get thirsty. Oh man, okay, so I got the pipe trailer up in the field, came back and I uh, got the backhoe, because I gotta dig out a spot along the riverbank to get our irrigation our suction pipe down into the river. So we're gonna take this up there, do a little digging, and then uh, Dad's gonna pick me up, and uh, we gotta get our pump and get that set. Okay, I made it up to the field here. Uh, we've got a uh, whole clump of stumps here that needs to get moved. It's in the way. So I'm going to see if I can push it around with a backhoe. I think Dad was trying to do so last year when he dug it out, but um, well, more or less it was too heavy and so he left it. Uh, it's been talked about blowing it up. It may happen, but for right now we at least got to spin it and get it out of the way. See if I can't nudge each side over one at a time, but my goodness, that thing is heavy. Ah. Oh, go. Dang. Okay. I got it. 
I got it moved. Enough that we can get through here without running over too much corn anyway. Okay, here's our little uh, slope and ramp down into the river that we used well, two years ago, I guess. Three years ago when we were up here. It's been three years since we irrigated this. I'm just gonna dip it out, the stuff that's settled in the bottom, and give a nice hole for our uh, pipe to set in to, so that it's deep enough it doesn't suck air. Okay, I think that that will work. Um, I'm gonna get the suction pipe and lay it in there, just see how it lays, but uh, looks looks decent. Okay, Dad brought me back. Next thing here, let's hook up to our pump. And then we gotta pull that in front of the shop, check tires and check out to uh, make sure everything looks all right. There's a vacuum pump on it. There's a injection pump. We'll need to uh, just make sure they all run work. Okay, this is our pump trailer. Big electric motor there. That's a 75 horse electric motor. Runs our pump here, Cornell pump. And uh, this is where the pipe going into the river goes, suction side, pumps it out here. We've got a gate valve and a check valve. Uh, and then we've also got, so here is our vacuum pump. It sucks the air out of here to prime it. Uh, and that's the lubrication bottle for that. And then over here, what's running right now is our injection pump that sucks out of that tank and injects into the water line. Right there. So I ran it, I'm running it just to test it. And uh, everything seems to be working pretty good, but that's how we uh, fertigate. We put uh, fertilizer in there, nitrogen, sulfur, whatever, and then we can inject it. And it's very important to note that it is injecting it uh, on the upstream, whatever, the or downstream, the past, the check valve. So that if there was ever an issue, the check valve will close and nothing um, that has been had fertilizer injected into it can get into the uh, uh, river feedback in. You got water on your lens there. There, that's better. So anyway, everything here looks good. I am going to get the grease gun and give it just a shot of grease in each of those uh, grease circs on the motor. But other than that, we're ready to go take this up to the field. I threw in some uh, blocking and some short pieces of pipe that we've got, a couple fittings. I'm also going to get a couple of bales of straw, and we'll go get this in place. Okay, and before we back that into place here by our trench into the river, we've got to get our pipe. I was going to do it earlier, and then Dad came to get me. So I'm going to get that one off the top of the trailer, set it in here. We'll see where it comes out at, and then we can get the pump put into place. So this is our suction pipe. I don't know how well you guys can see that end there, uh, but it's got a screen on it. That goes down into the river. Try and keep the from sitting on the bottom and sucking up stones and sand. And we push it in there as far as we can get it. About like that. We may have to take a shovel and try and dig out this hump of dirt a little bit to get it to lay a little flatter. That looks pretty good. We'll back up and see how it lines up with our uh, tube on our pump, but we're close. Okay, we got her in. Got this connection made, and uh, I don't know. I think the pump side of it's ready to go. We do need to uh, get uh, our generator up here and set and uh, all of that good stuff, and obviously we've got to lay all the pipe yet, so... We are not gonna get there tonight. We're not even gonna get close tonight. We may tomorrow if it doesn't rain tonight. It's after, well after five. About the only thing I'm gonna do yet is set the first couple of sticks of pipe to get it down on the ground and use the backhoe to dig a little bit of a trench here. Uh, we've got a bridge that we built, uh, wood planks that uh, go over the pipe in order to uh, be able to get across it. Cause you can't drive over it if it's laying on top of the ground. And so I wanna get that stick enough of, to get that set while I got the backhoe up here and then we'll be done with the backhoe I think and uh, then tomorrow we'll finish laying pipe again if it doesn't rain. My theory here is that me doing this guarantees that it will rain tonight which is the best case scenario. I want it to rain because I do not want to have to irrigate everything or anything and uh, I can't irrigate everything. Can't I can, I can do a fraction of our acres which is good. It helps but 
I need rain on all of it. Okay, first little piece of pipe is in. We used some real short ones here at the start and uh, put a couple of 45s in to get it down to the ground quickly. And then Dad is digging me a little trench there. We're gonna lay a pipe down in there and then we'll get our boards that go across so we can drive across it. And then get up to the corner, make another 45 and away we go, three quarters of a mile. Okay, first pipe in the trench, got the dirt leveled off. We have a bridge to go over that, it's at the farm. We'll have to get it up here tomorrow, hopefully. Well, hopefully not tomorrow, but maybe tomorrow. And uh, put that over the top. And I'm gonna put another piece of pipe on right now so we see where we're at and uh, we should be ready to go. Well there, we're uh, 70 feet from the water. <sighs> okay, well, that's all I'm gonna do tonight. Dad's gonna do a little spraying for me real quick and then we're gonna run the gator home and run the pickup and the backhoe home just in case it does rain. And I'm going home. Since I gotta take Dad back up there anyway, I'm gonna take that generator and go set it into place. All right, well, there. We got power and we got a pump and we got some pipe. Finish laying pipe and then we're ready to bring the traveler up here so it won't take as long tomorrow or won't take real long at all. Maybe uh, by noon, if it doesn't rain tonight, we'll be up and running. So good deal. I'll explain how all this works when we're ready to start it up. For now though, that's it for tonight. I'm going home, it's almost six. So I uh, hope you guys enjoyed today's video. Oh. It's not getting any less busy for me. I was hoping this week was going to be a little easier, but it's not going to be because, yeah. Oh, let's hope it rains tonight. We get an inch of rain tonight, everything calms down a little bit. I'll feel a lot better, but uh, it is what it is. So anyway, hit the like and subscribe buttons for me, please, if you would. And uh, if you have any questions or comments, as always, leave them down below. I will be sure to answer them. Uh, if we get a chance, which I, I don't know if we're going to or not, but we will at some point. Um, I would love to do a little bit of crop scouting this week. I kind of want to show you guys uh, where our growth stages are at on the corn and the beans and the wheat for that matter. The wheat is actually starting to mature and turn, turn ripe. Uh, so wheat harvest is getting close. It's still going to be a little while, but we're getting there. Um, yeah, so this weekend was the first day of summer. And the days start getting shorter now. And that is what triggers soybean plants to start flowering. So in the next week or so, we should start seeing, especially our early planted soybeans, uh, some flowers starting to form. So that's kind of exciting. We'll hit those uh, reproductive stages now. And uh, yeah, the corn's growing fast. It's in that double in size every week stage. And uh, I would love to be able to show you guys that as it grows here a little bit. I just need to get some time to be able to go out and do some crop scouting. So uh, priority number one right now until it rains is watering corn. We gotta get that done. And then we gotta get some equipment washed up. We gotta get our combine home. We got, we got lots to do. So anyway, have a great night everybody. We'll see you tomorrow.